Hello, party people, and welcome to a speed round where I'm going to go through a whole bunch of questions that really don't need long answers. Let's hop right into it. First off, Steve TV asks, are there solutions for managing agent jobs that will allow me to skip all these updates and job definition changes all over? No, especially not if you're dealing with complex high availability and disaster recovery solutions. Wish I had a better answer for you. Next up, my T got cold says, hi, I've got query store enabled on every database and it's overwhelming. Any advice for automatically monitoring query store across multiple databases? No, I haven't seen one. That could be your sign. If you want to go build one, though, no, you're welcome to give that a shot. Next up, Miles asks, hi, Brent, having too many VLFs, will that cause blocking in extremely rare cases? Yes. This is also how many VLFs is a good count to maintain. Run SP Blitz. It's my free server health check, and it'll tell you whether you're facing that problem and give you documentation on how to fix it. Next up, Drew says, we send out SQL backups direct to Azure, and recently the verify is taking hours. Is this an Azure bandwidth issue or a SQL server issue? I have no way of telling from here. Odds are, though, it's a bandwidth issue. What you want to do is verify up in Azure rather than trying to verify down on premises. Next up, 22 DBA says, how long do you think the DBA full time position will exist? I think it's going to be around forever. It's just that it may be at larger companies rather than smaller ones. Cloud databases make it easier for small companies to just throw a few databases in the cloud and call it a day. Next up, not close enough to retirement to stop learning asks, hi Brent, are you seeing any signs that Microsoft Fabric is catching on? I would have no way of knowing. I don't work in the BI space at all, so I would have absolutely no idea. Alexi asks, I've got a SQL Server 2016 Enterprise with 3,500 open sleeping sessions. Does that reflect on performance overall? Nope, not at all. You can have 3,500 open connections without a problem. Attend my Mastering Server Tuning class where I teach you how to focus on what's the biggest bottleneck on your SQL Server instead of randomly popping around and looking at stuff. Next up, Ignacio asks, have you read James Sarah's new book on fabric, lake house, and data mesh, mesh architectures? I don't work with those technologies, so reading that book hasn't been the highest thing on my priority list, but I do have it. I'm excited that that book exists. I just haven't had the time to read it just yet. Peter says, hi, Brent. When you update sections of your recorded classes, do you email subscribers? Yes, absolutely. Next up, Barry asks, will we ever see Flash 30-second YouTube shorts for office hours? They already exist. They're on my Instagram channel and TikTok channel. If you search for Brentos, our Instagram or TikTok, whichever one you prefer, knock yourself out. Next up, Karthik says, have you ever run into the issue where a plan shows a warning about a missing statistic, but the stat already exists? Yes. He says, we have to manually f or fix this by manually rebuilding stats. Not sure what causes it. Most likely a SQL Server bug. Next up, Carrie says, does anyone have a workaround for applying both CUs and GDRs with SS SCCM? I don't use Microsoft SS SCCM. I can't even say it. Uh, so unfortunately, I don't have any advice for you there. Next up, what's next asks, hi Brent, I've been a production DBA for 15 years. I want to learn something new. What do I, what should I go look at? Unfortunately, I just can't give personalized career guidance through something like a Q&A. When I work with folks that I know personally, we sit down and have like an hour long conversation about what their interests are, what their time horizon is, but that's way beyond something that I can shoot through quickly in terms of a Q&A. Next up, my T got cold says, when should I replace a temp table with a memory optimized table variable? Attend my class, Fundamentals of TempDB, where I teach you all the different options for TempDB data storage, plus a whole lot more, and teach you how, uh, when each part of them makes sense. Next up, Miles says, hi, Brent, I got a query that's running slow. One of the threads is waiting on SOS scheduler yield. My SQL Server has 32 CPUs. Nothing else is running and CPUs 15%. How's it waiting on CPU? Well, you can have one 
part of the query that's waiting on one CPU core, it may be maxing out that one CPU core while the rest of the cores are sitting around idle. SQL Server has a lot of tasks built in that can only run on one core. To learn more about that, check out my Mastering Query Tuning class where we talk about parallelism, or the Mastering Server Tuning class where we talk about parallelism. Both of those are good angles there. Next up, Grief says, is there much demand for a Postgres version of Constant Care? I don't know. I haven't devoted the time to go look into it. Continues with how hard would a port be? The port for the code is a piece of cake. The hard part is giving people advice on their Postgres servers because I'm just frankly not qualified to build that kind of tool at this point in time. We'd have to hire someone who is. Next up, Vittorio says, what contingencies do you have in place that Amazon raises prices on Postgres by 5x? Would you move to another cloud? Nope, not at all. In fact, Richie and I do performance tuning from time to time and gradually cut down our costs just whenever the costs slowly creep up because we write crappy queries. Uh, but our, we've dropped our costs by like 10x or 20x over time. If it raised by 5x, it wouldn't even be to the levels where it's been in the past for us and we would be totally okay. Next up, Captain Lou says, in SQL 2019, is it okay to leave lightweight query profiling turned on? No, only turn that on situationally when you're actively doing performance tuning on the server. It does have an overhead. It can be a significant overhead depending on your workloads. Next up, Finch asks, Brent, what's your recommendation on when you should create a new SQL Server instance versus when you should just add additional databases? You should always start by adding additional databases on an existing instance until you hit the point where performance becomes a problem. Then you start having discussions about what's the best way to, to improve performance. It's usually performance tuning rather than buying additional hardware. When you look at how expensive SQL Server is, buying additional hardware and licensing is usually a later resort. Next up, Miles says, I'm seeing inserts blocking selects. Well, d d d duh, selects need locks too. He says, I'm hoping the SQL inserts data at the end of the table. Urgh. Look, Speedy, you've got indexes on your tables, indexes that are sorted in all kinds of order. We can't add data to the end of the index. It's time for you to check out my free class, How to Think Like the SQL Server Engine, where we talk about how that data is structured and how it lives on the 8K page. Next up, GP Geek says, what is the best way to analyze a nested query with multiple union alls that runs forever, apparently on one or two of the union queries, break the queries up into pieces and troubleshoot them individually? It's kind of like saying, what's the best way to eat an elephant one bite at a time? Next up, Oswald says, what are your thoughts on the newer cloud databases that are managed and accessed via APIs? How might this affect the DBA role and required skills? If you're responsible for administering those, then you're going to be responsible for learning those APIs and writing code against them using tools like, for example, Python. Next up, does about nothing says, if you were a Microsoft SQL PM, what things would you do to retake market share from Postgres? I don't know that I would because Postgres is free. What I would probably focus on taking revenue from and market share from is Oracle because Oracle is much more expensive and SQL Server looks like a bargain in comparison. So I wouldn't chase no money. I would chase money, which explains a lot about what they do. Junior DBA, Junior Wannabe DBA says, about three years late for later from your blog post, what's your opinion about Polybase? Would you recommend it as an uh, option to replace linked servers? No. As I say over and over and over again in this stream, connect to the server that has the data that you want. Stop relying on technology to go find the data for you. Connect to the server that has the data that you want. If your bare bottom was here, I would spank it, but it's not. Also, it probably smells bad. Um, and then we'll do one more. Olaf Your says, what do the default transaction isolation level metrics look like for your constant care shops? I've never queried that directly, but I assume based on my work with clients that it represents similar to what I see with clients, which is most people leave their database isolation levels on the defaults, read committed, even though RCSI and snapshot are often much better options. People tend to leave things at the defaults rather than go out and proactively change things. 
So there we go. That is a fast speed round. Knocked out a whole bunch of questions there inside the span of 10 minutes. Hope you enjoyed and laughed and learned something. And I will see y'all on the next Office Hours. Adios.